Okay, hello, Bob Jackson here. I'm the uh, K-12 education liaison for the PRISM project here at Rose Hallman. Today I'm coming to you to um, give a little video lesson on adding a game to your Moodle course or um, actually to a section of your course or a unit of your course. Uh, there are six different games that uh, you can integrate into your courses uh, that are on the activity chooser on Moodle. Okay, I've already discussed or showed how to do uh, the crossword game in one video lesson uh, previous to this one, and today I want to do the hidden picture one. The hidden picture game is seems to me to be the, probably the most complicated one to set up. You gotta, you absolutely have to have the settings done correctly, or else it's not going to work. It will error out on you when you try to launch the game. Okay, you're uh, going. You're going to be using questions uh, either from your glossaries, in which you had to set up beforehand, or from question banks that you have on your course. Okay, uh, that you use for quizzes or tests in in your course, or you could, of course, you could. They could be assignments. You set them up through the quiz activity, but they could actually be assignments for your students. Okay, but you got to select them appropriately, but then there are some things within those that have to be done correctly or else they're not going to work, specifically on glossary. If you don't set the glossaries up correctly and choose the right settings on them as well as the um, game activity itself, then it's not going to work. Okay, and that's what I want to try to show you. Okay, these can be good, these games can be good tools to get some student engagement and to provide some a, a little different way of doing some review before your tests and quizzes. Okay, let's go to my uh, my chemistry course. I'm sorry if you uh, don't care for chemistry, but it's the thing that I know best and can come up with the uh, best ideas as far as real stuff like a teacher would do on a course. Okay, so on the course here, okay. I'm just going to close it up so it looks a little neater. Okay, I'm going to come down to uh, my first unit here. And you'll see in the unit, I have a section here, Games for Review. I've already showed in, the, in a previous video lesson the crossword puzzle. What I want to show you is Hidden Picture Game. Okay, Hidden Picture is where you take and you're going to have a picture on the Hidden Picture Game that's going to have an overlay over it. Okay, and that overlay is like a solid collar. And then the overlay is going to essentially be set up in blocks. Okay, to where as they answer questions, a block, a solid block is going to be removed and showing parts of the image that's laying back behind there. Okay, and the idea being that image is going to be something you're using academically that you're then going to have a question up there on that's going to be asking the students to identify something about that picture either identify what it is or something about it like the one I'm using you're going to see on mine I have ice melting and I'm, I'm doing chemistry so I'm having to identify to me whether a chemical or physical change is occurring by what they see in the image okay so it's just my way of kind of using a hidden hidden picture okay let me show you how to do this okay whenever you're going to add any of these activities you come down to the bottom of the section of the course you're working with go to add an activity or resource you get the activity chooser here and you see there's six games the game boards here you can pick out the games real easy I'm going to do hidden picture game you'll click on it it'll open this page okay which has all the settings on it Okay, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use the one that I've already kind of got made just because I've got it populated with terms and it you don't have to wait on me to type things in. And I can talk this through just a little bit quicker and easier. Um, just I'm not gifted enough to uh, talk and teach real well and type at the same time, I guess. But here we go. Okay, we have the settings page here. Okay, here at the top. Okay, you want to give it a title. I've just typed in, whoop, and I'm on the wrong one. Um, 
Let me go back out here. I'm on crossword puzzle. I'm supposed to be on hidden picture one. Okay. Um, okay. But, okay, it, it looks the same. It's just that this one is the, uh, the one I intended uh, for hidden picture, not crossword puzzle. Okay. So you put your title here. Okay. Appropriate to your unit and what you're studying at the time. Okay, if you want to put instructions here, you can do so. If you want to provide in detailed instructions for your students on how to do this activity, which probably as you get moving through the course, probably your very first one you put on your course, you're probably going to have to give more instruction. Okay, once they know how to do hidden picture game, yeah, they probably won't need the instructions. But you can put the instructions in there. If you wanted to appear on the main course page at the game, then you need to click this. Okay, if you don't click this and you put instructions in there, they won't see the instructions until they click on the game on the main course page. Then I'll open up, they'll see the instructions, and then launch the game down below that. Okay, so it's up to you how you want to do that. Okay, down here's the settings. You want to make sure you get these settings done correctly in order to do the uh, hidden picture game or else it's just not going to work for you okay um, and uh, this one can be tricky okay uh, because it not only has to do with what settings you have here but what settings you have in your glossaries that you use okay now then you're going to go here for source of questions Okay, this is the main source of questions and most important thing on each one of the games. Okay, you can choose to get your questions from your glossaries, which you have to have them set up beforehand. If you don't have any glossaries there, it's not going to work. You can go from question banks, that you go to your question bank for your course, which you can have several different categories, several different quizzes that you've used throughout your course. Okay, and then you can go to specific quizzes, actual quiz activities that you've already done. Okay, you, and, and select questions from those. Okay, I'm going to show you on these. If I select questions, then you're going to see I have to come down here to this. Okay, these are shaded. These, these will not, you can't access them. Okay, so if you select questions, you can access here. You want to select the question banks that you want to pull from for the questions for your game activity. Okay, so I'm not going to use questions, I'm going to use glossary, but I just want to show you each one of these. Okay, if I select quiz, then you see these all stay shaded, and then I go down here and I can select from the quizzes or tests that I have on my course. Okay, and to use questions from them. Okay, now then one thing different on the questions to show you, you can see on your question banks always what's neat. So if you really want to really random, if you got some uh, question banks got a lot of questions, then you can get more questions put into your game, and they'll get a greater variety of questions. If you go, if you got a quiz that's only got ten questions on it, then it's going to be really limited, and they're all going to get the same question. So that's something to think of too when you when you're choosing uh, questions and so forth that you're going to use for your game activity. I'm going to use glossary. When I do glossary then it's going to give me a, then I go to this drop down menu here and I'm going to select from my glossaries here. Okay. You would think I'd select hidden pictures glossary. I started to make a hidden pictures glossary but I decided I'd just use the glossary I already had which is unit one games glossary. Okay. Now then when you use glossaries on on this activity or if you know you you can use your glossary for any of the games okay but if you're going to use it for this game then you got to make sure that you set your glossary upright on your course so that it can be used for the game this game okay so i'm going to go to the glossary okay I have a glossary, Unit 1 Games Glossary right here. Okay, when, I, when I've when i set this glossary up, which I can just go into it. I don't have to go to the settings set actually. Okay, when I put my terms in to my glossary. Okay, 
when you're adding terms to the glossary it will look like this okay when you have your when you've made a glossary and you add a term you see this okay here's my term okay now then like this one this is a good one I picked okay it says chemical change I'm going to, have to make sure that I put in one of my settings on the game to accept the fact that I have spaces in words okay otherwise if you have two words and you don't select that on the module on the settings of the game module it'll error out because it can't deal with the fact there's going to be sp it's essentially spaces in words okay because it's two words okay and I'll show you that setting here in a minute so that's the first thing I'm saying here then for the hidden picture game activity how you put your pictures into your glossary makes a huge difference okay when you add a picture okay I put my term in I put in the definition goes with the term okay but when I put a picture in do not put that picture up here it shows you in this box that you have an option in the HTML box here you can add pictures here and they will show up and they will work in the glossary they won't work on the hidden game because they got to be put as an attachment okay so if you're going to use your glossaries for gaming activities and you have it in mind that it's what you're going to do okay you put pictures down here as attachments okay uh, and to do that you can drag and drop an image in or you can click on file here and go to your computer and get to file okay but your images have to be put in as attachments or else it'll never work with a game activity okay and that's the, that's the foremost thing okay in order to get them work so I go back to okay I'm going back to my settings on my game I've selected glossary okay I've selected a specific glossary my unit one games glossary remember uh, and you can build just one big glossary for your course it's just that if you're going to use it for game or the hidden game activity you got to put those pictures in as attachments okay now then you can have categories within your glossary I don't have yeah, if you did have you'd select that here okay and that way you can pare it down a little bit um, <clears throat> okay now then then you come on down through your settings here okay uh, this might be one here if you have your glossaries open for students to add terms to a glossary because this is the thing you can do for collaboration and of course um, you may want to put this only approved teacher glossary entries here so you don't get the students ones in because you don't know whether they're exactly right or not so you may select no there okay and then you can go down here you can set the number of times that they can try it okay number of attempts that they can have on the game okay going from one to however many okay you can put a grade in so you can actually give them a grade uh, for it, put it in an assignment grade, and put uh, what maximum grade you can get. If you're given multiple attempts, you can give either the average grade of all their attempts, or you can give like highest grade, or just the first attempt and the last attempt. Okay, that's up to you. Okay, now then, this is a, these are some important settings down here. Okay, and this will you'll have to play with. You'll see mine when I uh, play the game here in just a second or uh, open it up. That you're deciding here what it's going to look like. How many boxes are going to be on there on the, on the screen covering up the pictures and the actual size of it. And you're going to have to totally play. Like I got mine 500 by 500 pixels. Okay, and I think it's decent. And I got a six by six as far as sales. Okay, you'll have to play with that to see. Okay, then the glossary for main question and picture. Okay, now it's going to select these randomly too. Then you've got to select here and make sure it could be a different glossary than the one you select up top. But you must make this selection here.
okay, in order to get the hidden picture, okay, and the question to go with it, okay. Um, now then, allow spaces and words. It's like mine. You've seen that one glossary term I had. I think it was chemical change. If I wanted to accept that, then I got to allow spaces and word. I had to put yes because I think that by default this is a no. Okay, so if you have if you have words or concepts in your glossary that are more than one word, you got to select yes here for it to work. Okay, and I think the rest of them um, are just common settings, just like on any of the rest of the uh, activities. You can put in headers and footers if you want to put uh, something more descriptive above your hidden picture. Uh, you can you can put it in here. Okay, uh, or guidance on what you're expecting them to identify. Okay, uh, and then down here you can also do the setting that I like is add restrictions to where you can choose whatever, what other activities had to complete on your course before this will even show up and be available for them to do. Okay, the game itself. Okay, but then I save and return to my course. Okay. Um, you know, because I messed with that. Okay, I had to do since I changed whatever in there, I wasn't going to accept the change. Okay, so now then I'm back here. Here's my hidden picture game. I'm going to click on it. I'm going to launch on it. Now yours wouldn't do this the very first time, but, but since I've done the game before, it's saying continue previous attempt of the game. Okay, so I did. Okay, uh, now then, here's the hidden picture. Of course it's hidden. Okay, here's the main question. Oxidation of paint. It's supposed to be paint. There's a typo there. Um, okay. So then there's going to be an answer. Okay, so this is taken from a glossary. Oxidation of paint. What is that? Okay, that's my main question. But to work my way there, okay, I'm going to go down through these questions. Okay, a physical change of a vapor or gas to the liquid due to cooling would be condensation. So if I type that in and it's right, I can grade the answers as I go. And I'm the student working here. Okay? And I'll see that if I got it right, a piece of block comes out. Okay? And I set mine up six by six, so there's going to be six blocks this way, six blocks that way. Okay? Now then, if I don't answer them, I'll show you not answering them in order. So you see, amount of matter in a substance, well, I believe that's mass. Okay? So if I answer it right, I go great answers, and then I want to see another part come out. Okay, and uh, hmm. oxidation of paint is chemical change. Okay another section come out so they come out and as I come down through okay measure the ability and extent to which a substance will dissolve solubility and I'll keep on seeing blocks come out and then at any point that they see this and you got to realize this is random okay so and it just so happened on this and in, in the random this Oxidation of paint would be chemical change here too. Okay, uh, but it's just however deep your glossary terms are, how many terms you got, how random it can be. And obviously, I had a question down here the same as that and up there. Okay, on this one. But that's the way it works. Okay, that's hidden game. Uh, please let me know if you try it. If you have um, problems with it or don't understand, please. Uh, contact me and I'll see whether I can help you with it or not. But uh, it's up to you to make it kind of what you want on your own courses. Okay, have a good week at school. Please, if you have some uh, lessons that you'd like to share uh, through a video format like this, we'd love to have some of yours on here. 
Okay, that's it. That's a wrap.